Hey gang, welcome back for another episode. Uh, my voice is a little bit scratchy and I'm definitely a little cranky and under energy. Uh, I'm jet lagged, uh, but I'm going to push through this one because I got to get this footage out there. Uh, this one should be fun. We're going to do some scenery. I picked up a kit called, I don't know, Sector Something Ruins. Uh, yeah, it's a little version of it just to get started. But the uh, the box art is like, I don't know, it's all nice and pretty. So we're going to grime it up, uh, give my boys uh, something reminiscent of maybe Barbarous, the good old days. Uh, and then we'll do some basing for those pox walkers uh, so that they look cool in the environment. And it's just the first steps of having a cool shelf full of models, uh, but it's a big step. Uh, and I'm psyched to show you what I did. So let's get to it. This is... <laughs> Zero to forty K. So if you've been around since the beginning, you know this whole journey started with a trip to the Warhammer store. Uh, when I went in, I said, hey, I'm brand new. I know nothing about this. So they handed me this cool magazine. It's got a bunch of lore in it, um, and it has a bunch of little quests in it. Uh, and when you complete a quest, or, or a batch of quests, you get stamps. And for a batch of quests completed, you get uh, some sort of trinket uh, as a thank you. It's nothing crazy, but it's like a sleeve for some cards, and then a, uh, I think it's like a bag to hold brushes. I think you might get some dice. Uh, so I went back to the store because I'd done a bunch of things, but I had one uh, slot left open in the current chapter that I was working on, and that was for a piece of ground terrain. So I picked up the Sector Imperialis Ruins, and decided that would be my, my first little uh, piece of terrain to paint. And then I came up with a plan of attack, as I do every single time. So we'll start with that plan. You might have noticed that I have some background music going. I decided to actually license some music. Don't make a big deal of it. It's actually just a broad library of stuff for a set fee every month, but I figure that keeps my voice from being absolutely plain and out there in the in the void. Uh, and it may be fun as I sort of try to get more footage in here to just have something play in the background. If you have any preference, I don't know, leave a comment. Uh, but anyhow, uh, we're underway. So I've uh, obviously put the models together, glued them all up. Uh, they're a little bit of a pain because it's all right angles with not exactly a lot of uh, surface area to glue and, and get things to sit uh, at those right angles. Uh, I found it to be very helpful that uh, craft board that I have underneath, it's all right angles. So to be able to stare right down, sort of hold the pieces together um, and, and see that they were properly angled was very helpful. And then I, I sprayed them down with uh, some form of I don't even remember what I primed them with. Honestly, I've only got three bottles, so it was, uh, it was white. Uh, very thin, obviously. And so this first pass, um, yeah, it was Wraithbone that I primed them with. I can just look over at my notes, lo and behold. Uh, the main stonework, I started with Rakarth Flesh, which may sound like a very strange color to pick for uh, a base for stone, but I'm doing a certain amount of research here before I move on to my Plague Marines, and I was thinking that uh, Rakarth Flesh might be an interesting baseline color uh, for some of the armor. And because I'm going to make this a very Death Guardy sort of toxic looking um, set of terrain. Uh, eventually I'll hit it with Plague Bearer Flesh and then I think it's a Thonian camo shade uh, on there. So this is kind of a, a visual test just to sort of get a, an interesting green corrody looking stone that is kind of theoretically close to what Sarah might, might look like on the armor. So there's the method to my madness. One of the things that I really like about this model is got it's got all this like dope machinery on it. Um, on practically every panel, there's either vents or pipes or tubes. 
uh, that look really cool. And so it's a great opportunity to take something that's a, a fairly bleak wall uh, and add a little bit of shiny to it. Of course, uh, keeping keeping with Death Guard roots here, I'm eventually going to mess that all up on purpose. Uh, but it's going to start with Rune Lord Brass. Uh, it's a really interesting paint. It pops out. It's really got a shine. Even with the blurry shot here, you can you can already see from some of these little corners uh, and edges of those pipes that it really does you know catch the eye. I'm eventually going to hit it with uh, Beltan Green, which is going to give it this murky sort of overcoat of this glossy green corrosive muck. Uh, this part's super fun. Anytime I'm painting with metallics, I'm having an absolute blast. As you can see, I already cheated on one pillar just because I wanted to see how it would look. I added uh, the Plague Bearer flesh uh, over the Rakarth flesh, so that's that little green section. Uh, I knew it was going to take a while to dry, so I just hopped on that uh, real quick to get out the gate. Um, but right now, this big step is to get some more shiny, which will, of course, grind down as well. Uh, this is for all of the uh, supports. Those You can see that banding with bolts around each section. And then also the uh, basically the, the window pieces. There's no glass in there anymore, um, but it's very cathedral-like, very gothic. Uh, all those are going to get Runefang steel. I'll eventually rust the daylights out of them. Uh, so they'll be super dark, uh, but in the little intervening spots that aren't rusty, you'll get some of that shine through. At least that's the hope. Uh, once again, this is forward looking at uh, some of the metallics that I'll be doing on the Plague Marines, so this is a great place to test that out. It's time to get grimy. Uh, this step really starts to transform how the entire uh, operation uh, is going to look in the end. Uh, we're starting to get this really sort of weirdness between the, the green of the walls and the sort of brassy machinery and the shine of the frame. And it's this sort of, uh, I don't know how to call it, like this conflict of uh, colors and textures. Uh, that really is for me like I can tell at this point that this is actually turning out the way I hoped it would. Uh, it looks like a very, it's going to end up looking like a very unpleasant place uh, to do business. As promised, we're going to grind things up. I add some Typhus Corrosion to the metallic stuff that had Runefang Steel. Uh, that's all the framework, all the stuff that would go between the glass if it existed anymore. Uh, one of my favorite steps is just making things that are shiny now ugly. Uh, and uh, you can also tell here I've already hit the brass machinery stuff with the Beltan Green. So you can see it's got this like absolutely kind of pooled not so happy look. Uh, it's not so shiny brass anymore. It's uh, it's all coming together. This last little bit of work is for, there's these tiny little alcovey little, I mean, for lack of a better term, cubby holes that have skulls in them. Uh, and I just left the, the primer on, so it was Wraith Bone. That was cool. Uh, and I then went over them. I'm guessing it's Seraphim Sepia, because I use that one a lot. And I also, you'll notice every once in a while, I would dab uh, just some of the stonework with it. So this is kind of a close-up shot of the finished product. Uh, I dry brushed a bit of uh, typhus corrosion because I can't help myself. Uh, and in the end, if you see the pox walkers right next to it, it seems to match up nicely. Uh, and you can see, sort of spoiler, I added some uh, detail to their bases, which we're going to get into right now. Gonna need a lot of skulls. You can never go wrong with skulls. Uh, if you remember an episode or two back, I showed the box, you basically search for 340k skulls or whatever on Amazon. You get about four sprues of these things. They're absolutely sweet. Uh, I primed them all on the sprue to make my life easier. Uh, I think I was smart this time and actually filed down the uh, sprue clipping marks. This is some 
cork stuff. Oh, this. Artisanal maggots. Uh, these are actually locally sourced from some dude right down the road from me. Uh, Mr. Clay Rotten. You can look them up on Etsy. They're amazingly good maggots. I cannot stress that uh, enough. Uh, so show that dude some love because he, he figured out how to make really cool looking maggots. Uh, and then, as you saw there, it's some army painter tufts of stuff. And so right here, all I'm doing is just using modeling glue. I tried some Elmers to start and it just wasn't sticking things well. So I'm just using modeling glue, I'm not sure if that's right. Uh, but using tweezers and just doing a mix of some of these guys get a skull, some of them get a couple maggots, some of them get uh, a block of this corky wood sort of stuff. And I'm just kind of going with it. Get yourself some dentist tools. You can go on Amazon, get a set of these guys, just a small set, like five of them, uh, for maybe $10, $12. You don't need a huge set. Uh, but as far as scooping glop out of pots, in this case, it's uh, Sterling Mud. Uh, it's the perfect tool. One side's kind of a big spatula, the other one's kind of pointy, so you can use it to scooch the material in between maggots or skulls or whatever you're using. Um, so that's essentially just what I'm doing here with each model is scooping some on, getting it in there. Uh, I get a little bit on the feet so it looks like the, uh, the model is walking through this gunk, uh, and it's, it's fun. It looks a lot like brownie mix. Here we have the mostly finished product. You can see that one guy there whose base I didn't actually color around. Strangely, I missed that one. Um, but yeah, it looks pretty cool. I like it. Uh, each of my pox walkers has some cool stuff on their base. The buildings around them look cool. They fit well with them. They look, you know, grimy uh, and toxic. Uh, in this last shot, yeah, you can see a plague marine hiding in the background. Uh, in the next episode, I'll be doing, I think, three of those guys. So I just got to chop that footage up sometime soon uh, and say some dumb stuff over it. So there you have it. We've, we've got some terrain and some basing done. Things on that shelf are starting to look way cooler than they used to. We did it, folks. We got another episode in the can. Sorry for the delay. I was out of town uh, all week on some work stuff, which was a heck of a lot of fun. Going forward, uh, if I can learn to spell, uh, next time around I'm going to do a trio of Plague Marines. They're super cool models. I feel like I've built up the 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 knowledge and confidence to, to give those guys a go. There's a lot of crazy detail in them. Uh, past that, I'm picking up a Plague Burst Crawler. I really want to do an awesome vehicle. I think it'll be set in fantastically with the army that I've got going in that little scene. And then beyond that, I'm going to start looking at a project that uh, sort of takes things in a different direction just so I can keep expanding uh, my skills and, and just how I think about painting. So something with a, a different color scheme that isn't so greeny, but it'll probably still be grimy because uh, I love it. Anyhow, uh, thanks a ton, and we will see you sometime soon. Bye-bye.